This video will cover some basic features and configuration of the GrandStream GWN7800 series switches. You'll first need to connect the switch to your network and plug in the power. The switch will receive an IP address using DHCP. If no DHCP server is available, then it will default to the address 192.168.0.254. If the switch is assigned an address via DHCP, you will need to check the list of DHCP leases on your server and find the switch's MAC address to determine what IP address it was assigned. Once you have the IP address, you can type it into a web browser to access the switch management page. The default username is admin, and the default password will be printed on the label on the bottom of the switch. Once you are logged in, you can change this password by clicking on the silhouette and username in the upper right corner and selecting Change Password. The System Info page has some basic information about the switch, including the device name, which you can change if you would like, and the firmware version. Comparing this to the version available on GrandStream's website will let you know if you need to update it. Right now this is running the latest available firmware. The Port Info screen will show some basic information about the switch ports, including whether they are active and what speed they are running at. Clicking on the Edit button here will take you to the basic settings page for the port where you can enable or disable it, add a description, or modify the speed and duplex settings. You can see that there is an edit page for each of the available switch ports. Next screen that we will look at is one for configuring VLANs. By default, the switch uses VLAN 1 for all network traffic. To add an additional VLAN, click on the Add button and specify the number for the new VLAN. Once the VLAN has been added, we can click on the Edit button to access the screen for configuring the VLAN. We can add a description such as voice or guest, and most importantly, we can configure how the different switch ports function with regards to the VLAN. The default setting is the new VLAN is not available to any of the switch ports. To change this, we can click on a port to switch it from excluded to tagged and then to untagged. In the scenario where you are using this switch with a VOIP phone system, you would typically set the port that the phone system is connected to as untagged and the ports that the phones are connected to as tagged. There is additional network configuration required for this to function that is beyond the scope of this video. The port settings page allows you to change whether the port functions as a trunk or access port. All of the ports default to trunk, which means that they allow network traffic from any VLAN. You would tip gen generally use this type of port for connections to other switches, routers, wireless access points, or an IP phone and PC. An access type port only allows network traffic from a single VLAN. This type of port might be used for connections to a PC or network printer. The Port Members screen allows you to configure the switch by port instead of by VLAN. Clicking the Edit button allows you to configure the untagged and tagged VLANs associated with each port. Note that an access type port only has an option for an untagged VLAN. The Voice VLAN screen allows you to, to configure the switch with a specific VLAN for voice network traffic. 
This has the benefit of automatically setting quality of service settings appropriate for voice traffic on ports where it is enabled. In this case, we also need to manually enable the ports that will be connected to IP phones or the IP phone system to use the Voice VLAN functionality. The maintenance section has two screens that we will look at. The first is Upgrade. This is where you would go to upgrade the switch's firmware. The LLDP section is where we can configure the switch so that IP phones that are connected to it will automatically know what VLAN they are supposed to use. This is done with an LLDP MED network policy. We need to add a new policy. You can see that the application type is voice. In the VLAN box, we specify the VLAN that we are using for the voice network. VLAN tag should be left as tagged. COS and DSCP are quality of service settings. These would be typ typically configured as six for COS and 46 for DSCP. Once the policy is saved, the last thing we need to do is assign it to the switch ports under the LLDP MED port settings screen. Click the edit button for a port, activate the slider next to network policy TLV, and then select the network policy that we just created. The final area we will look at is the system section. Here you can specify your time zone and whether you want the switch to use NTP to set its time. Login service allows you to configure the switch with a static IP address instead of DHCP and to enable or disable Telnet and SSH access to the switch. SSH access is enabled by default. In user management, you can add additional user accounts to the switch with either full access or view only access. Lastly, be sure to click the save button in order to save any changes that you have made so they will be preserved if the switch reboots.